Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you for viewing. The most common question asked in the paranormal field is, what is a ghost? Sure, we all know those campfire stories. We all know of the experiences of people have of banging in the night or doors mysteriously closing by themselves, correct? But I'm going to take these stories further. Go into the where, the why, the how. These people that once lived are now in this ghostly apparitional state. So every story that I tell will be a true story. Every story that I tell will be recorded by other paranormal investigators where there is real evidence out there if you wish to go and find it. So buckle up guys, grab your pillow and let's start the story. Tonight, we go back to the Tower of London. Now, for those who are unaware of the history of this building, back in the year 1066, there was a King of England called King Howard. And across the English Channel in France, there was another person who wanted to rule England. And his name was King William. So he decided in the year 1066 to come across the English Channel and there was a battle which was called the Battle of Hastings. William defeated Harold very well and therefore this event is now called the Battle of Hastings and his name is now called William the Conqueror. So as a victory to his conquest, he decided to build a building. He wanted it so intimidating and so huge for the time that anyone travelling up the River Thames would be so scared to even contemplate trying to defeat this king. So he built this tower which stands at a height of 90 feet and the walls are 15 feet thick because it's built for intimidational purposes. Back then in the 1200s, nobody had a building that was three or four stories high. So this white tower that it is now called was able to be seen with a visibility of miles and miles where everybody knew that that is where um, William the Conqueror was residing. So we go past that now, and 200 years later, we now have Henry III on the throne, and France decided to come across the river, the English Channel, and they gave a gift to the king of three leopards. They may have been lions, for they, the pictures don't show the true characteristics. So these three animals were the first gifts to the king. 200 years later, sorry, let me just correct myself, 20 years later in 1255, the King of France brought over an elephant as a gift to the King. Now let's just talk about when in medieval times with no electricity, no sewage, people were very common to have no fresh vegetables or fruit. So if the people were living in squalor, imagine the life of those animals. 
So the elephant that first came over to the Tower of London, it only lived a few years, not only through the trauma of being caged and then put onto a boat, brought across the English Channel, which took hours and hours. But then you've also got the cage that it lived in for those few years before it perished and died. The cage itself was only 20 by 40 feet square. Can you imagine the trauma? Because back then, the royals that would have observed these animals, it was for pure amusement. Ha! Huh. They didn't care about the welfare. They didn't look after the health of these animals, for it was just for their amusement and their comedy routine of having wild animals there. So between the 1200s, to the 1835 when the animals were no longer allowed at the Tower of London. Some of the exotic animals that were gifted to the royals with being the kings and the queens over the centuries were talking about lions, tigers, monkeys, elephants, zebras, alligators and even kangaroos. What they were housed in is now called the Royal beasts exhibit so people would come along and pay a shilling to walk across the moat come up to the drawbridge which was the portcullis now if you know what a portcullis is it's a archway with the lattice gate that comes down that's a portcullis so very intimidating for all the commoners even coming over to see these wild exotic animals held in captivity with no chance of having a happy or content life due to the restraints, the chains and the ropes that would have been keeping them in captivity in their small unhealthy environments. But one of these animals which is still seen in the Tower of London was a bear. The ghost of this bear is still seen at the northern gate where all the animals were housed in their menagerie. People have seen this bear running and trying to escape. So people have heard its growl People have observed it coming around a corner. So you're face to face with this six or eight foot grizzly bear. Imagine the terror this animal would have been subjected to when it was brought over from the Americas. Months and months and months on a boat, probably in nothing more than a cardboard box down in the bilge with no sunlight and hardly any food. So this bear was terrified of where it was going. It would have been absolutely traumatised coming into this grand royal household where it was put simply in a cage for the benefit to amuse the others there. So this bear can now be seen. Over the centuries, there are many reports where people hear the growls at night of this bear suffering in its cage. There are reports of people through the daylight hours seeing this bear walking around like it is still chained at its feet and trying to escape its restraints. There are reports through daylight hours where people have been attacked by this bear when it's not really there because this bear wants its freedom. So this poor bear that has stayed for centuries at the Tower of London, imagine the executions and other hostilities this bear and all the animals else would have been witness to the traumas of medieval life in the Tower of London. So this bear is still there, trying 
to escape. Trying to gain help from anybody who would be willing to release it. So it would now have a life. Hope you like this story guys. Talk to you all again next week. Bye.